We're back here on a just absolutely gorgeous night for high school football. Midland Valley with the ball, throwing it across the middle of the field, and it's incomplete. Best drive of the night so far for the Mustangs. First quarter stats, Strom Thurmond has kept it on the ground. 65 yards all on the ground, and, of course, they benefited from the one Midland Valley turnover. For the Mustangs, pretty balanced, 23 yards rushing, 21 passing for a total of 44, but they trail it 14-0. Uh, the big story, too, no penalties. Both teams, even though we're just in week three, both teams have uh, played air-free football in the first quarter. So Middle Valley, second down and 10. Tanner White got a man coming. That's Moore. Moore is such a good defensive lineman. White throws it up. And he's got a man. It is caught. It's a touchdown. Hey, give Tanner White a lot of credit. He had one of the best defensive linemen in the area breathing down his neck there. That's an impressive throw. He, uh, you know, with, with the big defensive lineman trailing him, and, and he knew he was going to take a shot, and he hung in there. And, and made a great throw on the run. It's, it's just a, a great play and a great drive led by Tanner White to, to get uh, Millen Valley on the scoreboard. Wow, and if you're the Strom Thurmond defense, it's not like they – I was thinking maybe they gave up thinking it was going to be a sack and they were coming up or he was going to have to scramble. They were there, but Sheehan just got a step behind them and a great throw on the run. And Midland Valley, the kick is no good, our Georgia military kicks for college, but Midland Valley on the board. They trail it 14 to 6. And while we got a moment, each week you hear us a lot talking about our good friends from McDonald's. Well, that's because Game Night Live is presented each week by McDonald's. Now at McDonald's, you can create your own sandwich with McDonald's new signature crafted recipes like the bold new sira uh, signature sriracha made with spicy sriracha mac sauce, crispy onions, and a mix of fresh baby spinach and kale. McDonald's, I'm loving it. And. We have still not figured out the red cape guy, but we've got to. So at some point, Savannah, that's your first interview right there. He's got a makeshift baton of some type or weapon. I'm not sure which, but he's having a blast. He's been here since about an hour before game time. He is having a ball down there. He's got the cape going. Wear, I think I'm going to wear a cape to the next game. It's a good look for me, I think. <laughs> yeah, Matt Matt can wear a cape when he comes back. So Midland Valley to kick it off. Strom Thurmond on top, but a big play. And, Coach, that when you're struggling like that and you haven't been able to sustain the drive, <laughs> get a big play, huh? And, 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 you know, that gets them right back in the ball game now and gives them a little confidence and uh, gives them some excitement going into the – the second quarter, first play of the, the second quarter. So, uh, you know, now Midland Valley is going to try to play some defense and, and stop this running game of Strom Thurmond and, and get right back in this football game. And the return on the return was number two. That is Dante Holloway, the junior. That's the third touchdown pass of the season for Tanner White, who came into the game with a good completion percentage. He was 31 of 53 coming in for 246 yards, two TDs, and a couple of picks. He's added to both those totals tonight, one touchdown, one interception. And Will Sheehan has been his favorite target tonight. Three catches, including a score for him. And here comes Strom Thurmond. Jaquan Edwards, the tailback. And the sophomore quarterback is Jaquan Harris, taking over for, for Tyrese Nick, who was one of the best players in the area last year. And he torched Midland Valley for over 200 yards rushing last year in our game on Game Night Live at Strom Thurmond. They fake the handoff. Harris is going to keep it and throw out into the flats. Had a man wide open. Had two men actually could have thrown it to, but it's incomplete. Really good pressure up the gut by Tavares Williams, number 53, the linebacker. He made a good play and uh, put some pressure on the quarterback to make him throw it a little bit quicker than he wanted to, and he, he one-hopped it to his receiver. Yeah, the junior linebacker, Tavares Williams. We mentioned they got a freshman in there at linebacker, Antonio Freeman. Young, they start – Four sophomores and a freshman on that defense, along with a couple of juniors. So maybe the future bright here for some of those kids for Midland Valley. Right now they are giving Strom Thurmond a battle. And a different back this time running the ball for Strom Thurmond. A little change of pace with a little quicker back in there that time. That's number nine for the Rebels. Number nine, Wilson on the carry. And Millen Valley used a safety blitz 
number four, Raquan Jackson, came from the, the safety Number position to blitz and took on a blocker, and, and that left open some guys from Miller Valley to run free and make that tackle. Javon Holston was the ball carrier that time. A lot of people thought he might be the quarterback this season. Take it over for Nick, but it's been the youngster, Harris. Harris going to roll out, and now he's going to keep it himself. And he runs hard, trying to stretch and pick up extra yardage. And trying to stretch for that first down, but it looks like he's going to be a little short, although I don't usually make those calls. I leave them up to Nathan Edwards. And he didn't even hesitate. He's short. So short by about a yard. Fourth down and about a yard. And they're going for it at the 35, and Midland Valley quickly calls a timeout. Napleton and Infinity have against the timeout, and it may be time for the one call, that's all. Brought to us by our friends at Ken Nugent. And, Coach, what do you do here if you're – if you're if you're strong, you assume it's going to Edwards, but defensively, do you, are you able to key on him, or are you just trying to get penetration from your line? Yeah, you can try to get some penetration, whether it's uh, with some uh, blitzing off the edge or some uh, something creative up the middle. Millen Valley's putting number big seventy-two at nose guard to try to stop up those a gaps. Um, big number seventy-two Tyrese Cohen is playing nose guard on this series, so um, you know. And he, is, and he and he is big. When I he was the first kid I saw down on the field warming up. When I walked in, and I went. Oh, okay. Bill has got yeah. him a big boy. There he, he is. He's going to try to occupy 72. those uh, those A gaps, and so that you can run some people, whether it's up the middle or off the edge, and create some havoc. I was actually thinking that uh, Strom Thurmond was going to try to draw him off sides yeah. here, but you know, with their big running back and, and their running game, uh, you would think you could get a yard. So I'm sure the coaches are pretty confident they're going to run it up the middle and try to get a yard out of this. Uh, it just shows you how much confidence they have, not just in the run game, but their defense in case they don't get it. And they do hand it to Edwards, and he bounces forward for the first down relatively easily. But again, that showed supreme confidence both on both sides of the ball, really, for Strom Thurmond. Yeah, and, and you know, they've been running the ball well all season, so uh, there's no reason for the coaches don't not to think that they can't get a yard or two when they have to sure. get it. Makes perfect sense, no doubt about it. There's Edwards, who is averaging over 150 yards a game coming in, one of the area's top backs this season so far in the early going. And we have had, but that's one thing the area does have. We might not have the quarterbacks putting up huge passing numbers, but boy, do we have some running backs in the area putting up some big numbers. And Harris scrambling this time, going to well, make something out of nothing. Good run by the young sophomore before he slung down just shy of midfield. A.J. Brown of Harlem, one of those running backs that, you know, last week 19 carries for 256 yards and three touchdowns. And the week before, he had 180-something yards on just – Four, four carries, Coach. Wow. <laughs> yeah, well, we got some really good running backs in the area. Uh, Malik Knowles at, at yeah. Richmond's putting up some big hey, numbers. He was impressive last week. Yeah. I, you know, for his size, he just he he runs north and south. I love I love watching him run last week. You're right. Evans has got Corey Watkins, who's a good one as well. Here's a deep throw, and it's overthrown, but. Tell you what, good job by the receiver. I believe that was Williams. He became a defensive back on that play to bat the ball away. There's a look at Tyreek Williams and well put together young fellow there who has got a few colleges knocking on his door. It's another big third down play for the Miller Valley defense. If they can get off the field here and get the ball back for Tanner White in the offense, um, you know, they, they can try to make something happen here. Yeah, Nathan pointing out that the young quarterback has a really long, elongated throwing motion, something you're definitely going to want to quicken up as you get older. And a lot of that has to do with maybe arm strength. He's trying to wind up a little more to put a little something on it. Here's Harris going to keep it this time. There you go. Look, running with a little more confidence than maybe he did on that first possession. And he picks up decent yardage up the middle. And that was that same formation that we saw earlier when we saw Tyreek Williams in the, the Wildcat. We, they used that same tight formation. Yeah. Got a lot of yards off of that. And Trump Thurman on the move here in the second quarter. Game night live, Ashley Brown, Chris Hughes. And Nathan Edwards in the booth. Savannah Strom down on the field. And another good run by Edwards. Edwards is picking up yards by the chunk. He, he, he's yeah. going to push 
100 yards here in the first half. Uh, Midland Valley's got to find a way to try to slow him down. Their offensive line is getting a good push. And, you know, Edwards is such a big, strong runner behind them that uh, it's hard for them to bring him down until he gets five, six, seven yards into the back, uh, defensive backfield. Well, right on cue, Coach, he broke this one to the outside and hurdles the defender at the end of the play, and he's inside the red zone down to the 16-yard line. Well, Jaquan Edwards, we were talking about Tyreek Williams with the colleges looking at him. Well, Jaquan Edwards has offers from North Greenville, Florida A&M, the Rattlers, and he's getting a little interest from Georgia Tech. Uh, as big and strong a runner as he is, he would look good in that, uh, you know, the, that beatback position for yeah. Georgia Tech. Yeah, boy, they had a heartbreaking loss last week against uh, Tennessee. Gutsy call to go for two at the end of the game or in overtime. There's a throw out to Williams in the flats. Williams making a couple of defenders miss and then a stiff arm, and he's down to the five. There ain't going to be too many receivers in the area that can throw a stiff arm like that kid can. He's been a starter here since the day he stepped on campus on really can play on both sides of the ball. Not sure what his true position will be at, in college, but possibly receiver. Very versatile performer, though. And they hand it off, and that's going to be Javon Halston, and he is into the end zone. Jaquan Edwards, that time coach, lead blocker, and he opened a nice hole for Halston around the left side. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, A.B., uh, Coach Hiller is one of the best young coaches in our area, and, uh, you know, he does a great job for a strong Thurman, but – um, if, if I had some players like Jaquan Edwards and Tyree <laughs> yeah. Williams, I think I'd still be coaching. <laughs> I was going to say, they help make you look pretty good, don't they? All right, well, let's see what happens here on the extra point. Lawson reel on for our kicks for college from Georgia Military College. He is one of the better place kickers and punters in the area. And he boots that one up, and it is good. So, Strom Thurman comes right back with another score. Halston into the end zone on the touchdown run. Three different players have scored, and they lead Midland Valley 21-6 here in the second quarter. Back with more WJBF Sports Game Night Live in just a moment. Make tomorrow awesome with Xfinity Internet. Call 1-800-307-1010 today. And do what you love online with Xfinity Internet for only $19.99 a month for 12 months. Xfinity Internet delivers the speed you need to surf, stream, and download. Plus, with Constant Guard by Xfinity, your family will get unmatched online security. And it's included at no additional cost. Call 1-800-307-1010 today. And get speed, security, and value from Xfinity for an amazing price. Xfinity delivers reliably fast internet speed and the best in-home Wi-Fi experience. Get started with Xfinity Internet for just $19.99 a month for 12 months. It's all backed by our 30-day money-back guarantee, so it's risk-free. Experience speed at a great low price from Xfinity. Call 1-800-307-1010. That's 1-800-307-1010. Xfinity, the future of awesome. We are back at Midland Valley High School with the Mustangs Trail. Strom Thurman, 21 to six. Strom Thurman, one of the powerhouses in whatever classification, they've been in a couple of different ones. And I mentioned 24, 24 10 win seasons in their 56 year history. They have not had a losing season since 2002. And here's a nice run, here we go. This is Sheehan. Sheehan to beat the kicker in Lawson Real saves what would have been a kickoff return for a score. Sheehan having a big night. One man to beat, and the, the kicker made a shoestring tackle. That's a great play by the kicker. Or, or we're looking at a quick answer from Miller Valley. Wow, Will Sheehan having himself a night, Coach. He's caught a touchdown. He's got three catches, and now he almost had himself a long touchdown on a kickoff return. But he does give Miller Valley terrific field position. It was a 38-yard return. Uh, Tanner White has good field position here, A.B., to, to try to get a quick score and, and get back in this ball game and you know, you answer, mentioned, answer that long drive of Strom Thurmond. Yeah, you mentioned him being a competitor. You can see that. And there's a nice throw. 
I'll tell you, Tanner White, very impressive tonight against this good defense and made a great throw that time to number seven, Jacoby Sapp. A quick hitter. That'll against that fast defensive pressure. That's a good call there. It's just a quick slant route, you know, a, a three-step throw, and uh, Tanner White put it on the money, and, uh, you know, that's as good as a, a running play on first down. And Midland Valley now just outside of the 25-yard line. They run it. And this time right inside the 25, they're going to spot him down at the 25. And that time new running back into the game for Midland Valley. See who that was. That was number one, Walter Baker, a sophomore. So they got some young players over here for Coach Jenkins in his first year coming over from Seneca. Both these coaches' backgrounds were his offensive coordinators. And of course, for Coach Hillary, it was under Lee Sawyer at Strom Thurmond where they put up massive numbers. And for J Coach Jenkins, it was at Seneca where they put up massive numbers. Averaged 46 points a game last year. And nice fake by White. And Tanner White lowering his shoulder. and. Tell you what, fiery competitor there. Hey, don't let the don't let the pretty hair fool you guys. Yeah, the, the, this Tanner White is a, a hard nosed competitor. He yeah. runs the ball hard. He hangs in the pocket. He, he's a leader of the team. He he's playing really well. And I tell you, that is something that will gain the respect of his teammates real quick. You don't love your quarterback doing that necessarily, but like I said, you can tell this kid. It's going to be hard to tell him not to do it. I think. So Tanner White, impressive tonight, even though his team's down by a couple of scores, he's got them knocking on the door here. They are in the Georgia Military College red zone. Oh, and, or excuse me, the Augusta Technical College red zone. And he was hit. Trey Moore, I think, got to him. And whistle it dead, it looks like. Millie Valley's having a hard time blocking Trey Moore coming off that left side a lot of pressure on uh quarterback tanner white tanner white's having to leave the pocket many times to try to get away from trey well at north augusta had a hard time blocking him last year and they're, they're a bigger program for sure he is he's one of the elite defensive pass rushers in this area for sure and well end of the backfield again was 22 miles but that time he was unable to hold on to the ball carrier What's impressive about Trey Moore is that yeah. he made that tackle on the other side of the field. He pursued it after the running back was slowed down by Deshaun Miles. He's put on a little bit of weight since last year. He's always been long. Those long arms are what the colleges love. They know that frame. He can put on even more weight. And that ball's thrown, and he was anticipating where Sheehan was going, and Sheehan didn't get there quick enough, and the defender was right there. It's intercepted. And, oh, man, that stops what was a pretty impressive Middle Valley drive that started with that nice kick return. And, then, and you know, hold your head up, White. Uh, he's played pretty good tonight. He, you know, he's had made a couple of miscues, but he's also made some great plays for this team tonight. He has. you got to kind of take the good with the bad with, uh, uh, with Tanner White. He's, he's playing a great game, but he, he's made two turnovers. And uh, against a team like Strom Thurmond, you just can't turn the ball over or, yeah. or they're going to hurt you. He's only a junior. By the way, scores from around the area tonight, sort of what we expected in a few games. ARC, the most improved team in Richmond County, and maybe in the area, one of them. And uh, they're winning tonight 12-0 over Josie. They got some good young athletes that have stepped up to the varsity level there. Greenbrier leads Harlem as Strom Thurman tries to run it from their own end zone. Greenbrier leads Harlem 20 to nothing. That's a Harlem team that had a lot of excitement around them with those young running backs, but that Greenbrier team, a bigger program, you'd expect them to have an advantage, but they are flexing their muscle a little bit tonight. And North Augusta against uh, one of their arch rivals. I know it was always a rival when you guys played them in basketball back in the day, Coach. Uh, Lexington and North Augusta having their way at 21 zip there. Yeah, North Augusta started off this year pretty strong, and uh, to beat up on Lexington is, is pretty impressive. 21 nothing in the second quarter because Lexington's usually a, a program that's, that's pretty strong. Yeah, no doubt about it. And we'll get another score in here in just a minute that might surprise some folks. Washington Wilkes up on Jefferson County. We'll give you the details in a moment. It's a Napleton Infinity timeout. We'll be back with more Game Night Live in a moment with Strom Thurman on top.
And we are back here at Midland Valley. And there you see Coach Hillary, the mentioned one of the top young coaches in the area, former good player herself. A lot of Hillary's have been in this system and played well over the years. Midland Valley trailing at 21-6. And uh, let's go. Just as we were going to tell you that Washington Wilkes was leading Jefferson County 12-7, Jeffco has scored to make it 14-12 in the second quarter. And North Augusta has also tacked on another score over Lexington. It's 28 zip there in the second quarter. And we've got a false start on Strom Thurman. Have a dead ball, false start. And on folks, the offense. That is, Nathan, just bring it up. That's the penalty. first penalty of the Remains game. Remains second down. It's been, a, it's been a well played game. Both teams have, uh, especially early in the season, when you're expecting some, yeah. some mistakes and some penalties and some bad plays on special teams. Those typically happen early in the season. This has been a well played uh, first half. Yeah, I think the kids, coach, are just getting, they're getting so much more instruction at an early age. And, and you know, from. I think the, the coaching is better, I think, for the younger kids now. They're getting better instruction. They've got trainers all over, the former, former athletes that train them, and the techniques are better. I think they just are just are more prepared for high school when they step into ninth grade now than they used to be. And uh-oh, Harris is in trouble, and Midland Valley is going to get two points here. That's the second straight week we've had a safety. And that is Tyrese Washington, who's had a great game defensively for Midland Valley. So Midland Valley gets the safety, and they will get the ball back here. Well, that's a big play for the Midland Valley defense because they've kind of been pushed around a little bit this first half, and to come up with the safety and then get the ball back, I know Coach Hillary can't be too happy with that. Number 22 came untouched and uh, made the play in the backfield. That, that five-yard penalty really hurt Strom Thurman, putting them on their own goal line, and uh, Midland Valley took advantage of it. Well, nice play for Midland Valley, and they will get the ball back here and see if White can, you know, can put that mistake last drive pat, uh, behind him. Big, big play for Midland Valley. They, of course, had the costly turnover, and you know, if Midland Valley, had, I mean, they could have scored there. This is a, I think. This game might surprise some folks. A lot of people thought this was going to be super one-sided, and it looked that way in the early going. But, you know, White has made a couple of nice plays. The defense there makes a nice play. Kind of erupted there and got back into this game a little bit. Well, plays like that will get the crowd excited, yeah. get the kids excited, and, uh, you know, keep them in a game that – Really, they've kind of been pushed around a little bit the first half, but yeah. you know, score-wise, they got a chance right here before the half to go in and and get another score and make this a real uh, ball game. One possession game yeah. for sure. You know, and it's funny you get the two points, which is great, but you also get the ball back in great field position. Mm -hmm. Chance to really turn the momentum in this game late in the half here. And real, well, I say good field position until real does that. That ball is going to roll to the five and the return man all the way back to the one. What a by Lawson Rio and oh well I think we've got a new nominee for Augusta center hit of the game AJ Valentine with the classic tackle there helmet to the side lifted the runner up whoa AJ Valentine with the hit of the night yeah after uh, Millen Valley had that huge kickoff return on the last kickoff um, uh, it's hard to return them when you kick them over their head that far. Yeah, Lawson Real, the Millen Valley return men, were certainly surprised. And the return man all the way back to the one yard line, the momentum carried him after he picked up that football. So here's White with a man in motion. We got a false start on Midland Valley. So that is exactly what Strom Thurman needed, that kick, and then good coverage on the return. Well, hold on a second. I said it was on Midland Valley, but it looks like it's on Strom Thurman. So that'll back Thurman up, second penalty on the Rebels. Midland Valley flawless in terms of penalties, at least. Well, Midland Valley's got to be careful here with three and a half minutes left yeah. till halftime. They don't want to turn the ball over because they get the ball first coming out of half. That's true. You, yeah, you don't want to make a miscue here. And 
even if you don't score and it's 21 to eight, you get the ball at half, you're not in a horrible situation. You give up another score here and that's demoralizing going into the locker. And those young kids, you know, confidence wise would take a big hit. Encroachment on the offense. You know, if Midland Valley can bust off a big run or, or, or get a play that can get them to about half field, then you start taking some chances. Otherwise, yeah. you, you know, you try to run the clock out and then get the ball back at the second half and, and then try to go into halftime, you know, with the game still manageable. Yeah, 3.48 to go. Tanner White, the junior quarterback, first and five for the Mustangs. Or check that first and ten. Trading, they basically traded penalties there. And there's Valentine coming in to fill the gap. Also in there was 22, Deshaun Miles. Well, they got some linebackers, Miles and Valentine, Justin Williams, who plays the spur position. And that's considering two of their best defensive players that would be at linebacker are Tyreek Williams and Jaquan Edwards, who are mainly playing offense. I mean, that shows that they got a little bit of depth, even though they're not one of the bigger programs in the state for their level. They've got pretty good depth over there at Strom Thurman. Now this front seven for Thurman is really impressive. They got size and they got speed. Um, uh, they're really going to be a handful when they get into region play. Midland Valley double teaming more there. And White was able to scramble for some positive yardage. Of course, each week we honor someone for not only their work on the field, but in the classroom. And our Strom Thurmond High School Scholar of the Game is number 75, Noah Westbrook, an offensive lineman for the Rebels. He has a 4.09 GPA. And of course, out there on the gridiron as well. So congratulations to Noah Westbrook. And Savannah's telling us that the refs are Busting at the Bellin Valley coaches a little bit as they complete a pass here to the Rebels or do the uh, Mustangs. Taya White is one of those guys that seems to do better. He doesn't need he doesn't really need the perfect pocket. He seems to do better when he's kind of improvising. Yeah, he kind of makes a lot of plays on the run and uh, plays a little backyard football. But there's nothing yeah. wrong with that because he can make the plays. Um, you just got to keep the turnovers down and. Uh, you know, he's a good ball player. There's a look at Noah Westbrook, our scholar of the game, and we will introduce you to the scholar of the game for Midland Valley in the second half. So Tanner White trying to get some instruction there. So it's third down and 13 after the penalty assessed with 2.16 to go and counting. And White looking to throw downfield, and he overthrows everybody. Everybody went deep, and Sheehan was saying, hey, I'm open in the middle of the field. Yeah, he threw that one in triple coverage and, uh, you know, just hoping to get something out of it. But you're going to give the ball back to Thurman here with about two minutes left, and Thurman's going to be on their own side of the field in good field position. So, Miller Valley defense is going to have to step up and try to prevent a score to go into half 21-8. to eight. Well, They also would love a great punt here. Strom Thurman got the good kick from Lawson Real, Middle Valley would love a great punt here. Because you're right, they're back to snap better this time, and the punt is better as well. The return man at his own 45, that's Williams. Williams around the side, Williams has room to the 40, to the 30. Williams still on his feet, the 20, the 10, the five, it's a touchdown, and Coach, that's exactly what you said. Middle Valley didn't need to do late in this first half. Well, there's a flag. Is there a flag on the play? There's a flag on the play. Yeah, there is a flag down. As Tyreek Williams took it all the way back 55 yards. South Aiken leading west side out of South Carolina, 14 to zero. Cross Creek on top of the West Side Patriots. Of course, Chris Hughes. The Got a block in the back. Out there at West Side, they trail 14 to zero. On the return tonight. team, 10 yards, first down. And we appreciate him spending his Friday night with us here on Game Night Live. And there you see the return. Some good blocking, and Williams really after that. Blocking the back. Just untouched until the punter maybe got a hand on him. But at that point, it was too little too late. There was some good blocking there to set him free, but the, the first guy on the outside was called for a block in the back. And yep. 
that negates a great return. So Thurman has about a minute and 50 to, on the clock to try to get a score here before halftime. Well, let's see what they can do. Uh, Jaquan uh, Harris is the quarterback, and he's got Jaquan Edwards at running back. Let's see what they can do offensively. Midland Valley, though, they have hung in there tonight and desperately want to stop here. Harris going to throw it. Oh, and there's pressure. And I think that's Washington again, but Harris gets away this time. And Harris is going to pick up decent yardage. You know, Millen Valley's had some success getting some pressure on the quarterback, and it's kind of negated Strom Thurmond's passing game. Now, Strom Thurmond has had a lot of success running the ball, but they're, they're in their two-minute offense now trying to get some yardage through the air, and, and the Millen Valley defensive front is putting some pressure on them. That was actually Devontae Perry who had the pressure. I was saying 22. It was actually 25. Devontae Perry unable to hang on to the ball carrier, though. Harris is going to throw it out into the flats caught by Williams. Williams falls over a defender up near the first down marker. And Jaquan Williams, tackle made by sophomore Jamal Jackson. There you see Williams. Yeah, he doesn't look like a receiver. He looks like he can play fullback, but he's light on his feet, very fast, good athlete. They hand it off right up the middle. Good run. That is Edwards again. And Raquan Jackson was trying to rip the football loose. Clock running now, under 40 seconds to go. There's Raquan Jackson. I'm kind of surprised Strom Thurman didn't burn a timeout there. Yeah, you're right, Coach. Let's see what they do here with this one. Oh, and oh, Tyree. Whoa. Whoa, Tyrese Washington. Are you kidding me? Well, that's about the third hit, I think, that we've had. Hey, Augusta Paint Center hit of the game. Sorry, A.J. Valentine. Tyrese Washington has it now. Whoa, Tyrese Washington is having himself a game. That is a kid who is not afraid to stick his nose in there. What a hit, and it almost turned into six. Let's see the replay, and Harris never saw him. And bam, just a huge hit. And good job by Jaquan Edwards, the former linebacker, to save a touchdown. Stayed on it, didn't give up. So Augusta Paint Center hit of the game. We've had a few nominees tonight, but right now I think that's the front runner. Whoa. Last year, at the end of the year, we were struggling trying to find one that was the best hit. This year we got like four already to uh, choose from that might be the hit of the year. We have, yeah, we have three or four tonight that, that are really impressive. Man. All right, let's see what Midland Valley can do. Under 30 to go. They throw it, and it's thrown low. Is it caught? It is. No, hit the ground. The, the receiver pleading his case, but the official's right there saying nope. Well, one of the officials is saying it was a catch, I think. I think it hit the ground, but let's see. White throws it across his body there. And no, I said I thought it hit the ground. That's it looks like the receiver made a great catch. That's a catch there, folks. That was a beautiful catch. 12.9 seconds left. The tough thing is if that catch counts, they're at least in field goal range. Yeah. And now we have movement on the wide receiver, so uh, it's going to back them up five yards. Yeah, so instead a dead of being ball, down just shy of the ten yard false line, start. They're going in the opposite direction with the penalty. After a penalty-free first quarter, we've had approaching, I guess, about a half dozen here in the second. So Midland Valley with 12.2 seconds left, and you know they've made big plays. I said they need big plays early. They've made them at least the touchdown throw to Sheehan. The big hit there by Washington, the sack, the sack for the safety earlier. White's going to roll out. Moore's chasing him. Good hit by the running back to save him some time to throw. And hold on. There's flags down. And Savannah, Savannah is down on the field. She said headsets are flying as the coaches were wanting pass interference. And Tanner White's going to call timeout. A Napleton Infinity of Augusta timeout on the field. 
Ashley Brown, Chris Hughes, Nathan Edwards, Savannah Strom, and our entire WJBF crew. Savannah's down on the field tonight. Usually she's behind the scenes, especially in the week leading up to the game. She doesn't get a lot of no, – we don't mention her a lot on the air, but she really does a lot of the heavy lifting during the week, getting a lot of notes together. Okay, course, Coach. Information from the schools, putting out stuff on social media. So we really appreciate her hard work each week here on our broadcast. We wouldn't be able to do it without her. And tonight she's pulling a little extra duty down on the sidelines. Well, she needs to be careful down there on the Midland Valley sideline yeah. with the things are being thrown. and The receiver was hit, but I, the, here's the problem. I don't know. The ball wasn't catchable, so you can't call the – I mean, they wanted the flag, but the ball was out of bounds. And we could do the one call, that's all. Do you throw it in the end zone or do you try for a field goal? Uh, uh, quick, I, yeah. I, what think, do you do? I think here Tanner White's looking for Will Sheehan uh, somewhere across the middle, looking for a, a big play across there the middle. I, I, I'm not real sure they have time to set up for a field goal. So you kind of make the throw here to the end zone. Got a rolling out probably to get away from Big Trey Moore. The problem is you got they brought Williams in on the other defensive end. So you got Tyreek Williams and Trey Moore, and there there's pressure, and yeah, that's it. Tyreek Williams was able to get there. So that will end the half. Tyreek Williams, who had a kick return for a score, called back, makes the sack, and that ends the first half 21 to 8. But coach, after a really rough first quarter, Midland Valley made some plays and has made a game of it. They did, and they get the ball first coming out of the half. So, you know, uh, they put together a good drive here to start the second half, and, and we got us a ball game. So, you know, Midland Valley did what they needed to do in the first half to stay in this game and uh, really, you know, compete with a strong, strong Thurman football team. Well, the band you see coming onto the field, got a good halftime plan for you, so don't go anywhere. All